close your eyes as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. We bless your name because you've got us together from all these various places to study your word. We are praying, O oh Lord, that this very day you impart the grace, the love, the mercy, the power in the word to every heart in Jesus' name. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that your word will do good in our lives. That will not be hearers of the word only, will be doers of the word. And in the doing, in obedience to the word, the blessing that comes, the reward that comes. As a result of obeying your word, you're growing unto us in Jesus' name. All those who are gathered everywhere today, studying the Bible with us, I pray, O oh Lord, you bless them tremendously in the word as well, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. We can be seated now. I'm reading the text to you from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts, chapter 26, reading from verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet. Why have appeared unto thee for this purpose? To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that's in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and of Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet with suitable, appropriate for repentance. As we look at the defense of Paul the Apostle before King Agrippa, he related his encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, and the effect that encounter had upon him. A change of life, a change of purpose, a change of direction, a change of engagement, a change of what you wanted to do in life. When you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to be it, there's going to be a change in your life, a change of heart, a change of life, a change of direction, a change of mind, a change of purpose, and a change of what you determine to do in your life. Then it went further to explain that he had received a commission from the Lord to preach repentance, number one, to the Jews, number two, to the Gentiles as well. He was to preach in Damascus, and he did, and Jerusalem, and he did, and to the coast of Judea, and he did, and then he preached also to the Gentile world. The brief account gives us an insight into the secret of his effectiveness and success in ministry, which was obedience to the heavenly vision. When you study the Apostle Paul, study him to start with before the cross. Then study him when he got to the cross, and study him after the cross. You've learned before what Paul the Apostle went or saw, what he did, going about, and just arresting those people, believers, making the people blaspheme. And then they will cast them into the prison. And he did that with all his son. Anything he did, he did with passion. He did with his heart. He did with determination. And he did with fire burning within him. When he did evil, he was all in it. When he did bad things, he was all in those things. And when he did that, uh, when he came to the Lord, and then he became born again, a new fire came into him, grace came into him, power came into him. You'll find everything he also did, he did with all his strength. There was no half and half with Paul. There was no, not a maybe, an undecided attitude with Paul the Apostle. Look at this verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not 
is needed for to the heavenly vision. And I want you to circle or underline the word I. You'll find all the apostles using that word I. After the cross, when he met the Lord, I want you to look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 21. And look at the word I. Acts chapter 21 verse 13. Then Paul answered, What me ye to weep, and to break my heart, for I am ready not to be found only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. You see that what I, it was all in it. He never did anything without his heart, his mind, his life, everything within what he did. And then in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 24, Acts 20, verse 24, but none of these things would be, neither count I my life dear unto me, so that I might finish my cause with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I, that was it. And if you're going to do anything for the Lord, you, yourself, your very heart, your very soul must be in that thing. There must be that I that stands out clear, different, distinguished, and unique. You look at another scripture, Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 14. I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the wise, so that as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that at Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the new boss and also to the Greek. You see the eye there. He never went anywhere without carrying him his eye with him. He never went anywhere without carrying his very soul, his very heart, everything that he had within him. What made him teach? What made him really was on fire? What made him to be on fire? He never did anything without carrying that inner urge, inner power, inner strength with him. I am ready. He tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians 9, I mean in verse 16, but though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of on necessities laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. And then in verse 22, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. You'll see that I standing out very clear. He, he never said, other people made me do this. Other people hindered me from doing this. I could have done a lot. I could have gone very far. I could have climbed every mountain. I would have ascended the ladder of progress in evangelism and soul winning. I could have done this. I could have done this. They did not allow me. The eye was too strong that nobody could beat him back, and nobody could send him back, and nobody could discourage him. There was an eye that stood upright, and that eye that stood upright made him to do what he ought to do without thinking, I, I, I didn't want to do something for the Lord in this new year, in this uh, new in this ministry, I would have done something, but you know, they are stronger than me. But no, the eye was very strong. And then as you look at another scripture, this is not 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, chapter 15, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not fit, I'm not fit suitable to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Do you see that? He never left that behind. Yes, I understand. You know what, what people think about? I is the center of sin. Yes, I am true. I is the center of pride. Yes, I know. That is when you write pride, the middle letter is I. Crime, I, is the middle letter of crime. 
and he did it all. But he's telling you something. He said, yes, I know that. I know that. I know that. That when I was in sin, I was at the very center. And when I was in pride, I was at the... And then when I was in crime, I was at the very center. But now that I'm in Christ, now that I come to know, I have a job to do. And I have a place to go. And I have a ministry to carry out. I brought myself in. And you wouldn't be able to pay him, cow him, conquer him, beat him back, send him back. He did everything he had to do. And he brought all his heart, all his mind, all his soul into what he did. And look at the word of God in that still again. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly, more than they all. Yet not I, not the old I, it's a new I that did it now. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Second Corinthians chapter 7. Second Corinthians chapter 7. We're looking at verse 4. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. You see that even when he was in tribulation and when he was in persecution, he told himself, my soul, my spirit, my heart, standing there. And don't let anybody cower you down, power you down, conquer your spirit. I, he was still all there by himself. That's what the Lord is telling us. That now you gather up yourself, you collect yourself together, you put yourself together, and you say, I'm going with my whole soul, my whole body, my whole spirit, and I'm going to do something. If I fail, I'm not going to be shifting the blame on other people. I could have sincerely they made me fail. Uh -uh. Nobody makes you fail. If you fail, it's the I, it's you, it's your person that did it. And then he tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, now he's coming to the end of the ministry. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 6, 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 6, here he tells us, for I am now ready. But what did I read to you in, uh, in Acts chapter 20 verse 24? I am ready. What did I read to you in Romans chapter 1? I am ready. What did I read to you in Acts of the Apostles chapter 21 verse 13? I am ready. Now he comes to the end. And to the end of the ministry, the readiness was still there. And now he says in that verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Now, as I study the life of Paul the Apostle, I have to study the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. If Paul the Apostle comes next, if you look at the New Testament, and if you look at the impact that he had on the ancient world, and on the world of today, if you, if you look at the impact that Paul the Apostle with his writings and with his ministry, the impact that he has on the church, the large church, all the church today, Paul the Apostle is very important for you to study. I see seven words that come out of the life of Paul the Apostle. Number one, gratitude. Gratitude. And Yile was so grateful. I persecuted the church. I ran the church down. I wanted to destroy the church. But the grace of God came unto me. And how happy I am. How grateful I am. That the mercy of the Lord found me out. I wanted to write that word gratitude. I'm coming back to it. Number two, I see faith. Faith. I've committed everything now to the Lord. And I know that He's able to keep that which I've committed into His hand. Write the word faith. That's number two. Number three, you'll see Godliness. God is witness. And you are witnesses to how holily, justly, unblameably we have behaved ourselves among you that believe he had godliness number four obedience obedience when the call came unto him he said i conferred not i compromised not for flesh and blood obedience that's number four number five 
I'm ready to over and over. Readiness. Readiness. Number six, hardiness. Hard, the hardiness. H A R I N E double -S, S. Number seven, happiness. Happiness. What joy. Joy. In all the tribulation, in all the persecution, in everything that we want to. Happiness. That's why Paul and Silas at midnight they were singing praises to the Lord, and then the prison doors opened. That's a great earthquake. Look at those words one by one. Gratitude. Look at that word. What's the middle letter there? You count the letters of that word, and then you find the middle letter there. What's the middle letter there? Uh, faith. What's the middle letter there? And then you have godliness. What's the middle letter? Uh, obedience. The middle letter. Readiness. The middle letter there. And then hardiness. The middle letter. Happiness. Uh, teaches you something. Nobody can make you happy or sad. You are responsible. Hardiness means courage, boldness, strength of character and uncompromising life it means ability to endure anything in the ministry the lord has called you to and nobody can make you a coward nobody can make you courageous it's you it's i hardiness is i gratitude nobody can make you ungrateful you look at the mercy that the lord has shown unto you and nobody makes you ungrateful it's because of what they did to me it's because of what they said about me that's why i became ungrateful nobody makes you ungrateful the middle letter of gratitude is high and in the life of paul the apostle he said i carry myself with me everywhere i go and it's not i and i stand firm and i stand erect as the unbendable eye and i stand there and i know a success in ministry and then the obedience to the word of God and to go with passion and to go with fire and to go with energy and to go with enthusiasm there is an eye that stands in there and once I get myself together and I pull myself together and I'm willing to go the places the Lord wants me to go there is nobody that can decrease my passion my enthusiasm my energy my plan my purpose for the way of the Lord for the work of the Lord and say now I understand if I am going to serve the Lord acceptably, there is an eye that must stand in the middle, a cleansed eye, that has experienced the grace of God and that is willing.